For every beloved footballer, there is also one that is hated. And we are going to start with arguably the most annoying and hated footballer in the world currently, Vinicius Jr. Although he has suffered because of racial abuse and I need to make it clear, this has no place in the beautiful game and the fans who use race as a way to attack someone should be banned from attending matches, no doubt. What I wanted to talk about is how Vinicius behaves on the field and with other players who show him respect. Vinny is a very unlikable human being. He comes off as a very arrogant person. You don't even have to believe me. Just look at this clip of him disrespecting Kimi. Kimmich only wanted the play to start faster. Vinny also dives, provokes fans, players and always fights. But one recent event made fans all over the world hate Vinicius so much more. And it's about the Ballon d'Or. You see, Real Madrid fans feel very entitled. And once something doesn't go their way, it's automatically rigged or robbed. You saw it with the World Cup, Ballon d'Ors or other awards. Which is funny coming from them. Because in the Champions league they always got calls going their way. Two offsides there, one penalty here, one disallowed goal there and you have Madrid's road to the final. Still what happened at the Ballon d'Or this year shows lack of respect from both Real Madrid and Vinicius. Because when they found out that Vinny wasn't going to win the Ballon d'Or, Vinicius tweeted that he will do 10 times more if that's what it takes to win the award. Um... He wrote that before the ceremony even began. Real Madrid mentioned that they won't come to the Ballon d'Or ceremony because they don't go where they are not respected. Despite this, they still won the Men's Football Club of the Year, but of course, Vini not winning it meant that the award lost its credibility, that it's rigged and Rodri robbed Vinicius. Still, I have to ask you just one question to end this debate. Madrid fans say that Vini had a Messi or Ronaldo season in terms of numbers. But do you know where Vinicius is placed in terms of goals and assists? First, second, third? No. 34th. Even Bellingham was 17th and he was third in the Ballon d'Or rankings. I mean, Vini wasn't even the best player at Madrid last season in terms of numbers, let alone the best in the world. And if we talk about the best in the world, we have to mention Andres Iniesta. He is, unlike Vinicius, one of the most beloved football players of all time. He is often praised for being humble and a true sportsman, being fair and equal to everybody. Body. And the thing that makes him so likable is his attitude despite being so successful. You never see Iniesta bragging about his achievements. You never see him provoking opposition fans or other players. He is 40 years old and he spent 22 years at Barcelona. He is also appreciated for his loyalty. He never wanted public glory. He gave his all at Barca and when he knew he couldn't give his all anymore, he left in silence. Not only that, Andres Iniesta was a true gentleman on the field. He played in 1016 games and during his entire career he received zero red cards. Zero red cards in over 1000 games. How insane is that? However, one player who definitely has a very good relationship with red cards is Sergio Ramos. Loved by millions, hated by billions. That is the coat that would fit Sergio perfectly. Ramos had partnered Pepe at Real Madrid until 2017 when they got separated after Pepe joined Porto. In that time, they became known as the most brutal defensive duo in the world. Ramos even has a nickname because of that, the King of Dark Arts. He was a true captain at Real Madrid, a leader, but he was getting so much hate because of the way he behaved on the field. You don't have to believe me, even numbers portray the same story. He is the player with the second most red cards received in football history. Not only that, but players Playing for Real Madrid is also a very big reason why you will get hated as a player. You see, Real Madrid is a very controversial club, from the way they treat their players to the way they have been winning many important games. And Ramos embodies that DNA perfectly. For example, in the 2018 final, when Madrid went against Liverpool, Salah was the Reds' best player and he was considered really dangerous by the entire Real Madrid squad. And what did Ramos do about that? He 
he committed a dirty fall to get Salah injured. He grabbed Salah's shoulder and he went with it to the ground. Salah couldn't continue afterwards but Ramos got away with no red card or yellow card. A captain of the national team and the captain of the greatest club in history of football acting like this is a disgrace in every sense of the word. And the fact that people here are willing disgusting shit like this slide because he's the golden boy of the team you support is just as disgraceful. Still, despite what I said earlier, being a Real Madrid player doesn't automatically mean that you will be hated. Because the next footballer is loved by everybody, even Barcelona fans. Despite the fact that he is a Real Madrid legend. Luka Modric. The love for him started even before he became a professional footballer. While he was a kid there was an ongoing war in Croatia. Modric became a refugee. His father joined the Croatian army as an iron mechanic. In those years thousands of bombs fell on the city of Zadar, with football being the only escape from the reality of war. And in those difficult circumstances Modric began playing football, mostly at their hotel parking lot. Football fans respect him a lot because of his tough background and upbringings. He never complains about his team, his difficult situation or the public perception of him. When he signed for Real Madrid from Tottenham, he was voted as La Liga's worst signing. And what did he do about it? He went on Instagram or Twitter to complain? No. He proved everyone wrong by speaking on the pitch, through his actions. Modric was always respectful and considerate with his opponents. Fans also admire him for being the only player that interrupted the Ronaldo and Messi Ballon d'Or hegemony by winning the award in 2018 after a sensational World Cup campaign with Croatia. Let's not also forget that the guy is 39 years old and he is still playing for arguably the biggest club in the world. He still got it. Just last year he won another Champions League title. Luka Modric is truly that kind of player who has no haters. However, we can't say that about the next player, who has gathered a fair amount of haters over the years. Diego Costa. Where do I even begin with this guy? Diego Costa is mostly known for having a bad temper and for lashing out at other players, resulting in several charges for violent conduct, including stamping on opponents. He always attempts to get into other players' minds by provoking them both physically and verbally. His teammate from Chelsea, Kurt Zuma, said in 2015 that Diego Costa likes to cheat. Also, Costa is the type of player who thinks that he still plays in the streets. He's a big dude who dives like a girl at the slightest of touches, but also plays really dirty sometimes. It's nothing against him as a player. People know he's an amazing striker, but his behavior on the pitch is so f poor it makes him hard to like. Brazil fans specifically hate him for some other reasons. Diego Costa was born in Brazil. Despite this, he had the Spanish nationality granted. And because FIFA regulations permit players with more than one nationality to represent a second country, Costa decided to represent the Spanish national team. The hate comes from native Brazilians who would give their own to play for Brazil's national team. But someone like Costa, who has all the right opportunities and chances to do so, decides to represent another country. And if we are talking about loving your country and doing what's best for it, we have to mention Sadio Mane. Besides being a great footballer, Sadio Mane is also a great person behind closed doors. In 2016, when he joined Liverpool from Southampton for 34 million pounds, he became the most expensive African player in the history at the time. With that title, he could have gone and acted like the most important player in the team, demanding that the ball should always be passed to him. But no. He preferred to stay out of the spotlight in the favor of Roberto Firmino and Mohamed Salah, with whom he formed an incredible trio at Liverpool, winning it all together. But that's not the only reason why he is loved so much in the community. Sadio Mane is a very charitable person. His home country is Senegal and like I said earlier, he loves and respects his country so much that he never forgot where he came from, even after he became a pro footballer. So he donated 500,000 pounds for a hospital to be built in his home village of Bambali. He also donated 41,000 pounds to the Senegal government when the pandemic hit, to help his country fight the virus. But wait, that's not all. In 2019, 
2019, he donated £250,000 to fund the school in Bambali. He also donated laptops to students in his hometown and gave Liverpool shirts to people in his home village. People from Africa absolutely love Sadio Mane, but they share a deep hatred for the next player we are going to talk about, Luis Suarez. Ever since he began his professional career, Luis Suarez was a very controversial footballer because of his character. He beat several players in his career, was involved in a racial scandal with Patrice Evra, after calling him a racial slur, he was later investigated and fined, and when Suarez met again with Evra on the pitch, he refused to shake his hand. Still, the key moment we are going to talk about is the incident in the 2010 World Cup, with that being the reason why Suarez is hated by the entire nation of Ghana. When Uruguay met with Ghana, the game became a very hotly contested one, with the match going into extra time after a 1-1 draw. Ghana had a golden opportunity to score though. The ball fell to Ghana's striker Asamoah Gyan, who fired a powerful shot towards the goal and Suarez, to prevent Uruguay from being knocked out, saved the goal with his hands. Because of the handball, Ghana were awarded a penalty. A golden chance to go to the semi-finals of the World Cup. However, Gyan missed the penalty and Ghana were later knocked out after the penalty shootout. After the match, Suarez earned his reputation of a villain because of the way he saved the goal and celebrated when Gian missed the penalty. With many saying that Suarez had an unsportsmanlike behavior, while the Uruguay fans said that he was a national hero. One more national hero is none other than Ronaldinho. Although he has some very controversial moments in his career and after he retired, Ronaldinho remains one of the most beloved athletes of all time. And for one of the best reasons, his smile. Ronaldinho always plays football with a smile on his face, whether it's an easy game in La Liga or the Champions League final. He was always admired and loved for his way of playing football, being regarded as the most entertaining footballer of all time. People love him not because of the goals he scored, the trophies he's won or all the achievements he has, but because of the way he made them feel. Ronaldinho was that type of player to make you get out of the house and try to play just like him. He is the player you watch highlights of before going on the pitch. He sent a powerful message to everyone who wanted to become a professional footballer. Express what you love, do what you love, enjoy doing it. We can also be grateful to Ronaldinho for Messi, because he was the one that took care of him while he was young. Ronaldinho even assisted Messi's first goal. And and his way of motivating a young Messi always made Barca fans love him. Unfortunately, in modern football, there are no players like Ronaldinho. They don't make footballers like him anymore.